This whole review has been a nightmare, this is the second time I've written this as it didn't save and I barely suffered through the first two episodes. Please read this, it needs to have been worth it. Right, OK Disenchantment is a medieval fantasy comedy from Simpsons and Futurama creator Matt Groening and the first few episodes at least are a bit shit. It's quite disappointing really given how incredible his previous creations were. So let's dive into the first four episodes. Episodes 1 and 2 are a two-part narrative. They introduce the characters of Bean and Elfo, who looks like a green Bart Simpson Bean is being forced into an arranged marriage with a prince, played by Matt Berry, who is by far the best part of the show. Elfo is an elf who escapes from his homeland after being put to death for doing something unspeakably evil. Oh and there's Lucifer a demon, or something. His backstory appears to be the overarching narrative of the show. The first two episodes are about Bean's escape from her awful marriage. Episodes 3 and 4 are sort of standalone stories, except they have a small scene of the overarching narrative included in them. Disenchantment reminds me of programs like Doctor Who, primarily unconnected narratives with a single series arc connecting them. This works for a show like Doctor Who because it doesn't constrain itself with the typical sitcom tropes. Disenchantment tries to escape these but it is still limited to its one setting and recurring characters. Episodes 3 and 4 mainly involve drinking. In one episode she throws a house party. In another she has an exorcism. But both episodes feel very similar. The main problem I have with the show is not in the writing. The story is often engaging. However I am thrown off by the absolutely shite jokes. As usual with groaning the visual jokes are the best part and he doesn't disappoint here. But his attempts at python-esque humor completely fail. I appreciate the interesting twists on modern life. I laughed out loud at the police donkeys and the less than sly nudge at Melania Trump were very funny. But in his attempt to make the show feel more adult he fails miserably. Just putting drugs and sex references into a show doesn't make it adult. As can be seen by its 12 rating. In fact it makes it seem more juvenile, especially when you think about how groaning appealed to all audiences despite the Simpsons PG rating. Overall it's a nice try and I will continue to watch but the jokes are just not funny. Hopefully they improve as the show has at least two more series. I will leave you with my favorite quote from an actor in the show I admire. If you understand the reference it will be even funnier. While you read this you must raise your fist in the air and slowly lower it as you go. Fatter. Okay, I'll admit. I was a bit quick to judge this show quite so harshly. I stuck with it and by the end I really enjoyed it. First of all I can't remember if I mentioned the wonderful stab at Donald Trump's wife. At first I thought she was a one-off joke, but no. There aren't that many of those. This show has so much setup and payoff. Everything in the show is referenced at least once, by the end. Although the middle of the show feels disjointed and unconnected, everything happens for a reason. The jokes aren't great. But the visual ones are very nice. And the final twist was something I was not expecting. Bean is one of the most interesting characters I have seen in a long time. Her flaws make her a really different character. Not many shows would have the guts to kill one of their main character and then throw them off a cliff. The death and subsequent unresurrection of Elfo adds a real weight to, to the reveal that Bean's mother is not who she says she is. I left the show feeling like something had happened. This is something I've never really gotten from any of Greening's other work. The Simpsons is a sitcom so everything goes back to how it always has been, every episode. Disenchantment is not a sitcom. Far from it. It is an extremely interesting fantasy story, with fun social and political commentary. It might not be as hilarious as the early series of The Simpsons. But the later series are not unwatchable, this feels like those. It is perfectly fine and a nice way to spend your time. And thankfully it isn't weighed down by needless celebrity cameos. And the reliance on more adult themes for the comedy and appeal of the show lessened as it went on. I feel like they were used as a hook to get people to watch, and as the story developed it didn't need sex references and drugs to keep you engaged. Finally those 3D transitions were quite beautiful. They gave the whole show a sweeping, majestic identity. But why is Matt Berry still a pig? That needs to be sorted out. Oh and maybe remove the curse that's on the kingdom. But Matt Berry would be enough for me. Stay tuned for series 2. And let me know your opinions, I will happily argue my point with you. Okay, my last review was rather so-so. I enjoyed the show by the end but it certainly wasn't really that great. But after having watched series 2 I have seriously re-evaluated my opinion as the show has really kicked it up a notch. What an improvement. 
I'm not going to include loads of spoilers as I actually think you should go and watch this. But that being said, there are some so watch out. I think the problem was that I was thinking of this show as a comedy first and foremost. I don't think that that is right. The second series improves on every problem I had with the first. This time the story encompasses every one of the 10 episodes. The silly adult jokes are no longer there. This time it feels like a complex and interesting fantasy narrative. And I really enjoyed it. Every single one of the characters goes on a journey. They all change. And Bean's mother is perfect. She is just so evil. Zog goes on a journey of discovery. Elfo learns to stand up more himself. Lucy sacrifices his powers to save his friends and Derek becomes king. The visual humor has been toned down for this series. As has all the humor to be honest. There are still jokes but it doesn't rely on them anymore. It tells one focused narrative throughout. Like other Netflix series. The animation is really quite beautiful, especially in the drug trips. And those transitions. Wow. And after 2.5 series set in Dreamland I'm glad the story shakes things up a little by going to Steamland. Which by the way, looks beautiful. Its world is so rich and the visual jokes here are top-notch early Simpsons era good. The voice acting is really nice here too. Noel Fielding is just great. As is Matt Berry who is given many moments to shine. And Sharon Horgan kills it as Dagmar. What a great film reference she is. The final scene of the series leaves so many unanswered questions. But are we finally going to find out why Elfo isn't a true elf? Okay, this is the final season for a while. I don't even know if they will make another one. I hope so. These characters need a genuinely good conclusion, and I think they could be done with one final series. So this series doesn't explain Elfo's origins. Even though it is super clear he is definitely half drawn. But that's okay. Bean was pretty busy this series with her mad dad. And the fact that Dagmar played a minimal role was nice as well. It meant that Una could become a far more interesting character. The plot this series jumped all over the place. The whole Steamland section was kinda unnecessary. But super cool. Ioade was excellent and Bean had some great character development. More the mermaid is great. And Bean's sexuality is explored in a tactful and progressively interesting way. It isn't the main focus of the story. Nobody questions it. It is something that happens. Ioade steals the show though in the Steamland episodes. He is just so moss. Even when he tries to be evil, it's so deadpan I just couldn't stop laughing. The twist about his character was also really unexpected. Matt Berry's existential pig crisis was great as well. I really enjoy the episode set outside of Dreamland as the animation is really beautiful. This episode explores the character's image really well. It's a motif throughout this series. Not being afraid to just be who you are. Owning that is important and that is a great message. This show is not a comedy. I say this every time. But this series really shows that the writers are telling us progressive modern, fantasy that satirizes real life while also being entertaining and funny when it needs to be. Although why it still tries so hard to be edgy I have no idea. There are more moments of implied nudity in this series than in anything I've ever seen before. Why not just commit to being a series for an older audience? The show just doesn't know where it falls. And neither do I. There are problems with this series. Like the unexplained plot points that don't really go anywhere. And also the obligatory drug sequence that was the best part of the show was cut. It was a shame but the Steamland visuals more than made up for it. Steamland also reminded me of the old Simpsons episodes. There were so many references hidden in the background. This show is nowhere near the best thing on TV but it's really good. Watch it. Then give me your opinion. I can't wait to tell you you're wrong.